morning and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Wilmette on this third Sunday in October. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whether you're joining us here in person in the sanctuary or online for the live stream or later on in the recorded service, we're glad you're here. And we hope you find this time of worship, uh, this time of wrestling with scripture and being in prayer and song, a time that renews your spirit and reconnects you to the God who loves you and longs to see you flourish as well as all of our neighbors. Our hearts continue to be heavy with the war in Israel and Gaza and we continue to pray and wonder and lament uh, that conflict and ask God what is ours to do and how might we respond so many miles away. I sent a church email out on Friday with an invitation to pray and um, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, PDA, has long relationships in all parts of Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, and elsewhere, uh, and is already trying to help in ways that they can. Obviously, the conflict is, is just beginning, uh, but please be in prayer with me and with all of us as we wonder what is ours to do. There's also an insert on environmental justice in your bulletin that our Racial Justice Committee uh, has put together and will be in there for a couple of weeks. A couple of common life church announcements also to draw your attention to. Um, our deacon flowers have arrived for our deacons to distribute to care partners. Uh, care, those are right in the office annex. Uh, if you want to pick those up this morning, if you're a deacon, um, we would love to have you deliver that. Also, uh, we will be putting together our Tower Senior High Youth uh, care packages for college students with candy and ramen and all sorts of goodies that uh, college students like. Uh, if you know of a college student in your own family or uh, in your midst and you would like a care package sent to them, if you could provide care with the contact information and uh, bring a bag of candy as well to help supplement what goes in those packages uh, we'd appreciate it. We're hoping to send those out, I think, around the time of Halloween. Finally, we started a new adult faith formation class this morning uh, looking at uh, Howard Thurman and a spiritual walk with him over the next five weeks, and would love to have you join us if you're available. With that, friends, I invite you to stand as you're able to join in body or spirit in the call to worship using the words found in your bulletin. O oh God, in you we trust. To you, O oh Lord, we lift up our souls. Make us to know your ways, O oh Lord. Teach us your paths. Lead us in your truth and teach us. For you are the God of our salvation. For you we wait all day long. God leads the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. Thank you.
Please be seated. Jesus calls us to enter the joy of discipleship, the joy of following in his way, but sin clings closely and we struggle to respond fully to Christ's invitation. Let us seek God's forgiveness together so that we may know more deeply the joy God intends for us, first in silent prayer. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God. I'm sorry, wrong page. <laughs> now let us pray in unison. Gracious God, you are always present and active in us and in all creation. We confess that sometimes we fail to recognize and respond to your work in the world. We defer to power and privilege. Expect the tried and true, and succumb to doubt and despair when your ways are not clear. Behold, you are doing a new thing. Help us to perceive it. Forgive us when we do not respond to your call. Liberate us from our fears and self-imposed limitations. Guide us into the fullness of life and love that you are at work preparing. In Jesus' name we prepare, amen. Our God makes a way where there is no way, infusing our world with grace and hope when the, such goodness feels long gone. We are people de deemed and restored. Be confident that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God, amen. The peace we are offered through Christ's forgiveness and abiding love is meant to be shared. Please stand as you are able and share the peace that forgiveness brings, saying, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Open us to your life-giving word. 
quiet the voices within us that do not align with your will. Focus our minds on the message you intend for us so that we may faithfully discern your way. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow listened. This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. The second reading is from Romans 15, verse 7. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. This fall at First Pres Wilmette, we've been engaged in a sermon series on spiritual practices, concrete things we can all do during this season to strengthen our relationship to God and expand our love for ourselves and our neighbor. Last week, Pastor Lolly helped us look at gratitude, and we sought to practice that together throughout the week. In the weeks prior, we've explored the practices of sacred stories and forgiveness and Sabbath and sharing the table. Today, both of our scripture lessons are very short, but they each provide an indispensable reminder of a practice that typified the ministry of Jesus above all else, hospitality. Those who loved him and those who hated him agreed on this fact about Jesus. He welcomed everyone, the rich and the poor, men, women, children, fishermen, Pharisees, tax collectors, sinners, He never meant anyone he didn't want to welcome into the kingdom of God. He was embodying in the here and now. In the first reading from Luke chapter 15, we hear what is probably the most frequent critique leveled at Jesus in the Gospels. The scribes and Pharisees are in a huff. He's a friend of tax collectors and sinners, they say, and he eats with them. The goal. It doesn't appear here, but do you know what the other most common critique of Jesus was? that he was a glutton and a drunkard. His opponents would often often level this accusation at him, and it's striking, isn't it, that the two most common attacks on Jesus' ministry had to do with his practice of what we would call hospitality, with the fact that he was welcoming the wrong crowd and maybe also was the life of the party. In Romans 15, our other scripture lesson this morning, the Apostle Paul is addressing the divided house church in Rome who've cordoned themselves off into like-minded groups, the the so-called weak and the so-called strong, the conservatives, the liberals, those who like this way of doing church or that way of doing church. Take your pick. Paul says to them all, welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. He reminds them that their model for hospitality, for welcome, is Christ. As he has welcomed them, so they also ought to welcome one another. That's what gives God glory. Every Sunday we practice this in worship. We did it just a moment ago when we share the peace of Christ with one another. More than a hello and a handshake, although it is also that, this spiritual ancient practice is grounded in hospitality, in Christ's penchant for welcoming all into his presence, gluttons, drunkards, tax collectors, sinners, you name it, all of us, And so we reenact that in a small way every worship service. Even if we've never met the person we're sharing the peace of Christ with, it actually doesn't matter. It reminds us of the hospitality we're called to share with all of God's children. We're embodying horizontally the peace and goodness and love that is at our core, reminding one another and ourselves of the first thing Jesus said to his scared disciples when he appeared to them After Easter in the locked upper room, remember how he says to them, peace be with you. I probably would have said something very different to my closest friends who had abandoned me. But he says, peace, peace be with you. Very first thing he says. Very first thing he says. And so we say it to one another. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. It's a peace that that heals, a peace that passes understanding, a peace that invites us back into mutuality and kinship, 
into compassion and mercy, into relationship to all of God's children. And that's just the rub, if you ask me. If, you, if we look to Jesus as our model for hospitality, we cannot be content to welcome just those who look like us or talk like us or worship like us or live like us, the people in our family, our friend circle, our church, our zip code. In fact, if we're committed to following in Jesus' footsteps, then we still need to devote a good chunk of our energy on welcoming the stranger, whoever that might be in our midst, the poor, the vulnerable, the foreigner among us. That's the literal meaning of the Greek word which we translate into English as hospitality. It means showing a deep family love for the stranger, for someone we do not yet know. It's not an easy thing to do, is it? Catholic spiritual writer Henry Nouwen is helpful when he writes, hospitality means primarily the creation of a free space where the stranger can enter and become a friend instead of an enemy. Hospitality is not to change people. That's a key distinction, right? Hospitality is not to change people, but to offer them space where change can take place. The practice of hospitality, then, is nothing less than being Christ to others and developing the capacity to see Christ in them, even in people we don't like or who vote differently or who are on a different side of some conflict It is offering them, too, our attention, our energy, our words, our prayers, a place at the table, perhaps a room for the night, maybe even a friendship. At times, it will only require a little from us, and at other times, it might require a lot from us, but it will always at least require that we open our arms wide enough to welcome the guest, the stranger, the friend standing in front of us. One pastor friend of mine boils it down to two questions she asks of herself and the church she serves about the practice of hospitality. She asks, are we seeing Christ in others and do they see Christ in us? What about you? How are, how are you doing in your Christian life with the practice of hospitality? And what about us here at First Pres, well met as a, as a body in this time and place. I celebrate our regular hosting of family promise guests who stay overnight and share meals in our church three to four times a year for a week at a time in partnership with our friends at Sukkot Shalom down the street. We last hosted in mid-August, welcoming three families experiencing homelessness as they seek sustainable independence, job training, getting back on their feet. Dozens of you volunteered to make that happen, greeting them, making a meal, cleaning up, staying overnight, providing rides, a listening ear, offering your prayers. What a beautiful expression of of Christ's hospitality. And we host again from November 5th to 12th, so if you didn't volunteer last time and would like to, uh, we have room for you. Rick Drake and Cara Hughes do a wonderful job, fantastic job leading that ministry partnership. Or take the formation and development of Stock the Shelves, now its own nonprofit that supports refugees who've settled in Chicago with a monthly distribution of 15 needed hygiene items not covered by SNAP benefits. Essentials like diapers or laundry detergent, toilet paper, toothbrushes, toothpaste, and so on. Every fourth Wednesday of the month, they gather at the Indo-American Center in the city where are some 125 refugee families who've registered with us receive items that will help them rebuild their lives here in the U.S. This organization was founded four years ago through the courage and energy of three congregations, and especially Pastor Aaron, who used to serve as our associate pastor, First Congregational Sukkot Shalom and First Prez here in Wilmette continues to be a lifeline for children of God fleeing awful situations at home, a beautiful expression of the practice of hospitality. Family Promise, Stock the Shelves, are are two moving examples of such hospitality, and yet, and yet I suspect we still have much to grow into, right, in our personal lives, our family lives, our church's life. So here are four prompts as we close. I want to encourage you to give some thought and action to in the week ahead as we strive to practice hospitality more intentionally in the days to come. The first prompt, 
And it always starts with this, right? Remind yourself of Christ's gracious, unconditional welcome of you. Just as you are, not as you ought to be. God's love meets you right where you are. Full stop. Full stop. This is hard for some of us, I know, but it's the the heart of the good news. We think, well, no, we have to do something or be something for God to love us. No, that is not works. God loves us no matter what, no matter if we do bad things, do good things. God's love is the constant underneath all of our lives and the life of the world. Have you heard Anthony DeMello's tender line? He says, look at God looking at you and smiling. We must receive this first prompt day by day, moment by moment, God's gracious welcome and love of us. Only then can we turn and welcome one another in Christ's name when we are welcomed unconditionally by God. We're empowered to offer that same welcome to one another. It's a lot like the love your neighbor as yourself, right? That it's both descriptive and prescriptive. We, we love others in the way we are loving ourselves. Uh, it's not necessarily the other way around. A second prompt for us to consider this week about hospitality Get in touch with someone in your life who has the gift of hospitality, as we sometimes call it in the church. I know we have many of them here in our congregation. But there are many others in our lives and in our community, too. Reach out to someone. Maybe it's someone in your family. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's a friend. Ask them to share their wisdom. It doesn't mean we all have to do hospitality in the same way. We follow our personality, our gifts, our energies. That's the gift of our uniqueness as children of God. And yet some of us can teach one another, share best practices, model what it looks like to be hospitable in Christ's name. So even if we don't feel very good at hospitality, we can learn from one another and work at it and learn to be authentically welcoming in our own way. A third prompt, think and then act on how you can be hospitable to the people already in your normal circle this week people you, you know you're going to see, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, etc. If you're like me, it's easy to just go through the motions with the people I'm closest to, my spouse, Arianne, our children, Eden, Simon, Noah. How might I show Christ's gracious welcome to them, to our parent, to our dear friend, our co-worker, our neighbor, this week that would give glory to God? I encourage you to do that and I'll be working on doing the same. And fourth, and finally, pick one person whom you would consider a a stranger, a a, a foreigner, someone not in that normal circle, and strive to show Christ's welcome to them. Maybe it's someone who's just moved in on your street but you haven't met yet. Maybe it's an employee at the grocery store you always see. Maybe it's a refugee family. Maybe it's the conductor on the metro you always see in the morning. Maybe it's someone with a different faith, a different race, a different nationality. Give them a sincere word of encouragement, a small gift. Tell them you're praying for them. However the Spirit leads you is fine. Find one person this week to whom you can offer Christian hospitality, showing deep family love to a stranger in your midst. So there are the four prompts, four ways to respond and engage in the Christian practice of hospitality. Please do let me know how the practice goes for you, if it's easy or hard, if it's what, something God might teach you, if you had an eye-opening moment. It's my joy and privilege to be practicing our faith together. When we welcome one another, friends, it's a a surefire way to bring glory to God. It's also a surefire way to keep us alive to the light and life and love of God in our midst, which is always reaching out ahead of us and beyond us to encircle more and more people in God's strong and wide and loving arms. Jean Venier, the Catholic theologian and founder of Le Arche Communities for Adults with Disabilities, writes that, Welcome is one of the signs that a community is alive. To invite others to live with us is a sign that we are not afraid, that we have a treasure of faith and peace to share. But a community which refuses to welcome, whether through fear or wariness, insecurity, a desire to cling to comfort, or just because it might be fed up with new people, a community like that is is dying spiritually. It's a a bit harsh, I know, but I think Veneer is right. 
He has spent so much of his life practicing hospitality to adults with disabilities, a special segment of God's children who are sometimes excluded. They have taught Veneer a great deal about community, what it means to truly welcome one another and to be alive. When you and I practice Christian hospitality today, tomorrow, and the next day, we are following in the footsteps of Jesus. That's what his ministry was all about, after all, being with people, loving them, eating with them, talking with them, encouraging them, challenging them, laughing with them, telling stories with them, building the kingdom of God with them. But he couldn't have done any of that if he didn't welcome them first, make them feel safe and needed and heard and valued, and then keep providing hospitality to them just with his presence, maybe more than his words, to keep assuring them that they are welcome here with him and that the children of God, that they are children of God with gifts to share with the world. That's the long and short of it, friends, being welcomed by Christ ourselves and then offering that same welcome to others as we develop the capacity to see Christ in them. When we do that, hospitality becomes not just a practice, but even a way of life. May it be so for you and I and us together this day and in the days to come. In the name of our God, who is light and life and love, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Will you please join your hearts and minds with mine in prayer? Passionate God, we are ever grateful for your love for us, for your patience and your trust. This day we are thankful for the joys of this community. We see signs of love everywhere. We see a glimpse of your welcome hospitality from handshakes and hugs to conversations and praying for one another. This morning we gather to pray for our community, for our world, that you continue to be with us in happiness and weariness, in celebrations and struggles. Merciful God, we pray for our world that faces so much violence. This morning we pray with heavy hearts for the people suffering war conditions and the threat of war. We pray for Ukraine and Russia, for Israel, for Gaza. We pray for innocent lives lost, for soldiers fighting wars they don't understand, for those who live in fear and hide in shelters. May leaders at every level learn to speak in favor of humanity and justice. We pray that all people can walk the path of peace, the path of forgiveness, the path of equality. Embracing God, we pray for those who suffer in our community and throughout the world. We remember all those who face daily persecution and discrimination. Enfold them in your loving arms. Teach us to use the power of your love and your forgiveness. May our words be ones of healing. Almighty God, we pray prayers for those whose voices have been silenced. We ask for your spirit of reconciliation to be near. We pray that there may be an end to bullying in schools, to harassment in homes and workplaces, discriminatory laws and practices. May we learn the call to be bearers of peace and spread this vision through love and solidarity. Reconciling God in a world where we struggle to understand pain and suffering, and most especially to understand that in the lives of those we love, we bring before you those for whom we weep, those we embrace in our hearts, those who we reach out in the yearnings of our prayers. This morning we lift up Amy Miller after the death of her brother-in-law Ray, be with Ray's family and friends and comfort them in their grief. Savior God, make your church bold, that it may be the channel through which justice and peace, integrity and wholeness, harmony and goodwill may flow, that your kingdom may come in all its fulfillment of life and health and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Why do we give each week? We give because we have received so much from God. We give to express our gratitude for all that God has done for us. We give because we trust that God can do more with what we have than we can do alone. We have many ways to serve and multiple ways to make a financial contribution. Please consult your bulletin or the slide on your screen. In faith and gratitude, let us give our tithes and offerings. Draw the circle wide, draw the circle 
God of extravagant mercy, of wide, wide circles, 
With outstretched hands, you have poured out wonder and delight, goodness and beauty. Take these offerings, we pray, as our protest against all that is small, all that is evil and callous, greedy and oppressive in our world and in ourselves so that we and others will know our world to be blessed by your abundant love and grace. Amen. You may be seated. I now invite Chris Decker to come forward to give a brief word. There's Chris. Uh, Pastor Appreciation. Several years ago, someone decided October is Pastor Appreciation Month, uh, which I guess works out well for Kara, Lolly, and I. Uh, But Chris has just a brief word of thanks to offer and some cake afterwards. Thanks, Jeff. Good morning. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. I think we should be grateful and appreciative of our pastors every day. We are certainly blessed here at First Pres. We'll met with an amazing pastoral staff. And uh, I know I'm grateful and appreciative every day for Pastor Jeff, Pastor Kara, Pastor Lolly. So on behalf of the congregation, the PSM, we will uh, have some cake in the lounge afterwards and invite you all to come and join us and recognize our pastors and thank them. Friends, as you go forth into this world that God so loves and that is tinged with resurrection light, may you and I, may all of us together practice hospitality, receive God's welcome of us, and then pass that welcome on to those we meet, those in our family, our friends, our social circle, and those we've never met, those who might be strangers to us. Now may the God of peace hold you very close. The God of all comfort shine his light into your life. And may you trust that God is with you always, no matter where you go, no matter what you do. And all God's people said, amen. Amen.